Today, Kentucky State Board of Elections certified votes following a statewide re-canvas. We were in Frankfurt today as the results were made official. A construction project three years in the making. The Mountain Parkway is now open to four lanes in Sayersville and Restaurant Row is fully accessible. Soggy weather returns as a cold front moves into the mountains Friday. I'll have those details right now at 5.30. Dedicated to Southern and Eastern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 5.30. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. One week after Kentucky held a statewide re-canvas of the governor's race, election results are officially certified. Democratic challenger Andy Bashir defeated Republican incumbent Matt Bevan by just more than 5,000 votes. Bevan requested a re-canvas of the ballots before ultimately conceding to Bashir last week. Hillary Thornton has more from today's meeting in Frankfurt. Certifying the vote totals is one of the last things to happen to make the results officially official. That taking place here this morning at the State Board of Elections. All favor say aye. 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 The board voting unanimously to certify election results. That includes the highly watched and highly competitive race for governor. Incumbent Matt Bevan requesting a re-canvas that taking place last week and confirming his Democrat challenger won the election. In Bashir receiving 5,136 more votes than Bevin. Every election has transposition errors. Every every election, I mean, we're, we're talking about a human process. He says that is why there was a tedious process in place with several different sets of eyes looking at the numbers along the way. When we get initially get those numbers in, we we do an, uh, a, a first tally. We send those out to the full board, including the Secretary of State. Some errors found by the board, as well as Allison Lundergan Grimes, board members explaining those errors matched up, corrections were made, and reflected in the total certified today. Executive Director Jared Deering explaining that because it is a human process, errors can happen, which is why the system is in place and why there can be some changes seen from the immediate returns on election night to the numbers actually certified. All of that system goes in to protect our elections, to secure our elections. And, and that's why this election, you know, while there is a lot of politics that swirled around that, you know, from the board's perspective and administrative perspective, the politics, you know, that's not our, our viewpoint. The election itself was handled incredibly well. It was a very smooth election. Uh, we didn't see any major problems. And, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, the, the election told that story. Hillary Thornton, WYMT Mountain News. The inauguration for Governor-elect Andy Bashir is scheduled for December 10th. We've seen that mixture kind of of sun and clouds throughout the day. Clouds now increasing as we head into those evening hours and as we head into the rest of the overnight hours. We'll go ahead and take you up into Interstate 75 into London. It's been pretty nice out there. You can see just a few of those clouds, sun peeking through at times, and now the sun is starting to set. So check out satellite and radar over the past couple of hours. You see those clouds, those rain chances kind of on and off over the past several hours, and it'll get more soggy, of course, as we head into the rest of your Friday. So scanning the skies now, not too bad. There are just some stray rain chances at times. You're saying that over into parts of Powell County, Estill, down into parts of Rock Castle, and even a little bit over to the east, including parts of Pike County, a little bit into Harlan, Letcher, and into Belch, dealing with a few of those scattered showers. Well, temperatures right now into the upper 50s to lower 60s, so feeling pretty good out there. So don't get used to those warm temperatures, though. We'll start to cool off as we head into the next couple of days because that cold front is moving in. So overnight, we'll actually remain on the warmer side as well, those mid to upper 40s. It'll be cloudy, scattered rain chances, and those rain chances really increase tonight. And then as we head into your Friday, I have been so excited to show you guys this. Check it out. Don't be the sun as we head into the next couple of days. I'm sure you guys have seen this meme all over social media. So, of course, we put it in weather terms. So make sure you watch that full forecast coming up in a few minutes because, Steve, we're going to see rain over the next couple of days. All right, Paige, thank you. From the House impeachment inquiry to infrastructure, a 10-minute conversation with Senator Rand Paul covered a host of topics this morning. WYMT's Will Puckett has more from Kentucky's junior senator. It is the talk of Washington and the nation. I haven't seen anything that's changed my mind. Senator Rand Paul is talking about the impeachment inquiry going on in the House of Representatives. 
I think the president had every right to ask whether or not uh, there was an investigation into the uh, Burisma and the paying of a former vice president's son $50,000 a month. We also asked Senator Paul about Kentucky's election results and how he plans to work with Democrat and governor-elect Andy Bashir. But it also shows that it's a mixed bag and anybody who wants to win needs to appeal to people on both sides of the aisle. So we'll see. I think both parties need to work together and see if they can get some things done for Kentucky. Senator Paul says he worked with Governor-elect Bashir's father in hopes that will happen this time. But there are issues that need addressed. Everybody needs to come together to fix the pension system. There was also a vote Thursday on one of Paul's proposals to fund an infrastructure plan to help the country's road woes. We'll, we'll get maybe 25% uh, of the Congress, but the message back home to people would be if they vote against my amendment, do they really care about roads and bridges for Kentucky? That amendment was tabled by a vote of 73 to 20. Will Puckett, WYMT, Mountain News. You can catch the entire interview with Senator Paul on our website at WYMT.com. Kentucky Lieutenant Governor Janine Hampton will appeal a judge's ruling to dismiss her lawsuit against Governor Matt Bevan. Last month, Franklin Circuit Judge Philip Shepard ruled the governor has the authority to hire and fire staff members in the lieutenant governor's office. Hampton filed the lawsuit after two staff members were fired by the Bevan administration. Hampton's attorney filed the appeal yesterday. Both Hampton and Governor Bevan will, of course, be leaving office on December 10th. After three years of construction, the new four-lane segment of the Mountain Parkway expansion running through Sayersville's Restaurant Row is now fully open to traffic. Restaurant Row marks the second section of the parkway to be completed. Construction began in September of 2016. The section of the parkway was designed to increase safety for drivers as well as those traveling through the town of Sayersville. For us to have our customers to be able to flow in and out without the flow, uh, you know, the uneven flow is very excited. By expanding the road from two to four lanes and creating wider lanes for larger vehicles, traffic can flow easier. Sidewalks were also added to encourage residents to walk. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has formally been charged in a series of corruption cases. Israel's Attorney General charged Netanyahu with fraud, breach of trust, and accepting bribes in three different scandals. This is the first time a sitting Prime Minister in Israel has been charged. It throws the longtime leader's power into question. Today, we learned another Eastern Kentuckian snagged a Grammy nomination. Martin County native Angelina Presley's country trio Pistol Annie's was nominated for Best Country Album with Interstate Gospel. They are up against Rick Church's Desperate Man, Reba McIntyre's Stronger Than the Truth, Thomas Rhett's Centerpoint Road, and Tanya Tucker's While I'm Living. The other members of Pistol Annie's are Miranda Lambert and Ashley Monroe. You only have one more day to donate blood for the Big Blue Crush competition. It's the Kentucky Blood Center's annual blood battle against Tennessee. Coach John Calipari tweeted a reminder to fans to donate. If you do, you will get a long sleeve Big Blue Crush t-shirt and a McDonald's coupon. At last check, Kentucky is in the lead with more than 1,700 donors. Tennessee has more than 1,100 donors. And again, that competition ends tomorrow. Coming up on Mountain News at 5.30, doctors believe they may have discovered a new type of lung injury tied to vaping. Hear about that after weather. And as we head into the next couple of days, temperatures a little bit warmer. Cold front moves in. Temperatures crash by the time we get into your Sunday. I'll have more on that coming up in just a little bit. A now empty courtroom was full of emotion today when the family of Heidi Hamilton came to ask the judge to give her killer a second chance.